Welcome to Simplified Physics. This is the second lecture on dimensional analysis. Today we will discuss about the application of the dimensional analysis. Before starting the applications of the dimensional analysis, let's know about the homogeneity of dimensions of our equation. In a physical equation, each term has same dimension. That means dimensions of each terms are identical in all given physical in any physical relation this is simply called homogeneity of the dimensions that means dimensions on the right side must be same as dimension on the left sides then the given physical relation is dimensionally correct so each term to be so each term in a physical relation physical equation must have same dimension let's see the equation b equals to u plus a t a very familiar equation b is the final velocity u is the initial velocity and the third term a into t that is the acceleration times t that in a t and uh, we can say the given physical equation is dimensionally correct if east of these three terms have same dimension according to the principle of homogeneity of dimensions let's see the correctness of the this equation dimensional formula of v is we are familiar with l t minus 1 we have already discussed in the first lecture of this topic similarly u is the initial velocity obviously the velocity so dimension is same as v l t minus 1 and dimensional formula for a t for acceleration l t minus 2 and for time t so all the three terms t 1 of the t will be cancelled so dimensional formula of a t is l t minus 1 that's why we can say dimension of the each term b u and a t are same that is simply dimension on the left side and right sides are also same simply we can add the dimensions so the given physical equation is correct in terms of dimensions dimensions that means a physical equation v equals to u plus a t is dimensionally correct what if we re if we replace the inner a t by 3 a t 4 a t or whatever the number doesn't matter is the dimension of the 380 480 is different from that of 80 the numbers in the equations simply the pure numbers are dimensionless and dimension does not depend on the magnitude so what about the physical equation b equals to u plus 380 is it dimensionally correct obviously b equals to u plus a t and b equals to u plus 380 both of them are dimensionally correct equation so we can say that even if a physical equation is dimensionally correct the given equation may be wrong but what about the dimensionally wrong equation the dimensionally wrong equations are always wrong now let's go for the applications of dimensional analysis the very first application to check the correctness of the physical relation and we can check the physical equation is whether dimensionally correct or not by on the basis of the principle of using the principle of homogeneity of dimensions let's go for example Let's check the correctness of the physical equation. Time period of the simple pendulum is given by t equals to 2 pi square root of L by Z. This is the time period. 2 and pi are dimensionless constant. L is the effective length of the pendulum. And Z is acceleration due to gravity. Is this equation correct? Let's check. Dimensions of the time period or simply it's a time period unit second or time dimension is simply t and 2 pi is a dimensionless quantity 
L is the effective length, so it has dimension L and G is acceleration due to gravity and has the same as the dimension as acceleration of the body A. So dimension of the G is L D minus 2. Let's see for the dimension on the right hand side. Simply replace the term L by dimension L and term G by dimension L D minus 2. Simplify it will get a dimension on the LHS is T sorry dimension on the RHS is T and similarly dimension on the LHS is also T so we can say that the given physical equation T equals to 2 pi square root of L by Z is dimensionally correct physical equation because dimensions on the terms on the left hand side is identical with the dimension on the right hand side that's why we that physical equation is dimensionally correct let's go for the second application of the dimensional analysis and we can determine the dimensions of the physical constants of a given physical relation let's uh, find the, the gravitational force between the two bodies of very familiar equation e of equals to g m1 m2 whole by r square where f is the gravitational force between the two bodies g is universal gravitational constant m1 and m2 are the masses of two bodies and r is the distance from the center of the masses g is universal gravitational constant and using the dimensional analysis we can find the dimension of the capital G. Let's simplify the equation G equals to we can write from the given equation F into R square by M1 into M2. So dimension of the F it's a force gravitational force between the two bodies dimension of the F is M L T minus 2 if you are confused with this f is equals to simply m a m has the dimension m and e is the acceleration acceleration has the dimension l t minus 2 that's why force has the dimension m l t minus 2 m1 and m2 are the masses of the two bodies so dimension both of them have the same dimension so simply the mass so dimension m r is the distance between two bodies that's the dimension after r is l now replace with these values f m and r on the equation so the dimension of the g is after simplifying you will get g equals to m minus 1 l3 in in the form to power superscript m minus 1 l3 t minus 2 so this is the dimensional formula for the acceleration due to sorry universal gravitational constant z universal gravitational constant z in this way we can find dimensional formula for the physical constants involved in the physical relation so what about the dimensions involved in the z that is minus one in mass in length and minus 2 in time once again minus 1 your mass 3 length and minus 2 in time let's see the second example for the determination of the physical constants the relation between the P V and T pressure volume and temperature of the gas is given by the relation P plus a by b square into b minus b equals to rt where a and b are constant and the dimension after these constants can be determined a and b can be determined using the dimensional analysis and it should be noted that note down the point two terms can be added in a physical relation two terms can be added or two terms can be subtracted only if both of them have same dimensions so in order to subtract b and minus b that means b and b must have the same dimension and p 
as well as e by b square must have same dimension so dimension of the v is must be same as dimension of the v so dimension of the b is equals to v that is base the volume l into b into l uh, for the cuboid or l cube for the cube simply whatever length breadth or uh, thickness and breadth height whatever the dimension is l and that is for the volume l cube similarly already mentioned p and a by v square must have the same dimension let's check for the pressure pressure is defined as force by area force a moment before we have discussed force has the dimension mlt minus 2 area it's a l square you can say length into breadth you can say whatever its dimension is l square after simplifying you'll get a dimension for the pressure m l minus 1 t minus 2 now p and a by b square have the same dimension, dimension so enclose them in square bracket dimension of v is same as dimension of a by b square so dimension of the p just we have this uh, found it m l minus t m l minus 1 t minus 2 a v of dimension of a we are going to find and b is the volume l cube l cube and square as it is after simplifying you'll get the dimensions of a constant a as well in this way we can find the dimension of the b and a using dimensional analysis in this way we can we have set the correctness of the dimension and determine the physical constants involved in the physical relation dimension of the physical constants involved in the physical relation and this is the end of the lecture thanks for watching in the next lecture we'll discuss some more applications thank you